So we'll just zero the device. And then if I, for example, measure 1.8 meters. Guys, before we go in, the site supervisor said to the homeowners that he's looking forward to my report and that he doubts that I'll find that many defects. Good morning everyone, I am in New South Wales today doing a kind of a PCI inspection for this beautiful home. However, we are in Kellyville. Kellyville in New South Wales, guys. And take a look around me, guys. Take a good look. Really, really nice suburb here. Nice and quiet. Take a look guys, what a beautiful suburb. Beautiful guys, non-compliant rain heads, non-compliant overflow. Have a look at this house for example guys. They hardly use, it's a flat roof and they use um, eave gutters as well, as you can see the quad gutters. They try to avoid box gutters. I've noticed uh, lately that in New South Wales, they hardly use box gutters, guys, because when they do use the box gutters, they kind of stuff it up, and I'll show you now why. There is that home right there, we're going to go through shortly. I've recorded the drone footage, which I'll show you shortly as well. They've reduced the box gutter size from about 300 mil to 100 mil, which is a big no-no if you're going to follow AS3500.3, which is Australian standards for uh, plumbing and drainage. Now, if you look here, they've got um, rain heads right there, non-compliant rain heads as well, and it seems to be common throughout. Also, this these rain heads right there, you can see non-compliant as well. There's a little overflow as well, non-compliant. Let's go for a little walk around. We got some of the boys here taking a break from a day's work. Shit, they just started here. Have a look guys, non-compliant rain heads as well. Here, really nice homes, nice suburb. Check it out guys, New South Wales, Australia. Look at this driveway for this home, beautiful. Nice house here as well. I'd love to inspect these homes. I'd love to see what the builders in New South Wales have been up to. Check out the overflows here for the balcony. Good work. Non-compliant rain head. Check out the render. Terrible. All right, let's start the inspection, guys. Let's go. So basically, you can see I, I have barely any access with the ladder. I'm gonna have to use the drone to see what's going on there. So let's just walk around and then I'll bring up my... Let's bring it up and let it follow us. So basically I want to look at this area right there. Let's take a look. As you can see guys, they've reduced the box gutter uh, width to about 100 mil, which is non-compliant. I'll put an extract on the screen for you guys. And also check out this rain head as well, guys. Non-compliant rain head as well. And there is also this capping right there that has no upstand and no uh, pressure flashing installed, non-compliant. This is the home right here. We'll take a little walk around, but I really want to get access to the roof right there. As you can see from my drone, we've got some good evidence that there is non-compliant works here, but I really do want to get up there. I've got a ladder that I got from Melbourne, but it doesn't reach, doesn't reach at all, guys. But take a look, let's have a little walk around to see this PCI. I mean, have a look at this. See this here? This is basically a termite barrier to treat the, the termites. And this is where another section of the home is. Check this out. Look at the building debris. 
I mean, this is in breach of the Australian standards as well. I mean, you can't sit it on building debris like that. It has to sit on soil, so the poison can just soak into the soil. Also, check out these openings here. I mean, this is just minor issues right there, guys. Have a look. But we'll keep walking around and see what else is going on here. And as you can see, they love using Eve's gutters here, the quad gutters, guys. They love using it here in, in Sydney. Let's keep going. I've set up the ladder right there. This is the ladder that I got from Melbourne. And it does not reach, as you can see, really, really high property. So I might go next door. I saw a construction site, and I'm going to ask them if they'll let us use the ladder or if I can borrow it. Hopefully they're fans. So let's keep going, guys. But take a look at the status of this job site right here. Nice setup area, nice barbecue area. I really want to get access to this part right there. It's around four or five meters high. I can I can see non-compliant pressure flashing here. The capping might be non-compliant as well. I can see gaps underneath this window, so we want to get up there. I really need good access because I want to get really, really close to it. Now also, there's a lower roof area here, and you can see the capping, there's no upstand or flashing. I can probably get my extension pole to show you guys. So we're gonna, there's a job slot right there. So let's go have a look and see if they can give us access to get a step ladder, an extension ladder hopefully. We'll go in the site and see if there's a ladder here and ask him if they can let us borrow it. Oh, here's an extension ladder, beautiful. Should we just take the ladder? <laughs> no, no, I better ask him. Excuse me, mate. Yeah, boss. How are you? How's it going? Good, good, man. Talk to me. You reckon I can uh, borrow a ladder, mate? I'll bring yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah, 100%. With Thanks, man. Much, well, yeah, yeah, anything will be good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah no, you, can you reckon I can borrow? I'll bring it back after yeah, around yeah. half an hour. 100%. Thanks, mate. No problem, bro. No problem. Okay. Cheers, bro. Thank you. Oh, that was uh, pretty good. So let's go. Pretty nice people here in Sydney. Set up the ladder here, and as you can see, it doesn't reach at all. I'm gonna have to get the extension ladder. So let's go back. Oh, I'm boiling hot here. Let's go. I managed to get on the lower roof, a little roof right here, and a couple of issues here. We've got the gutters with the incorrect slope. Has to be a minimum of three degrees. We've got also the fixing points, the distance between each fixing right here for this pressure flashing is non-compliant. Has to be no more than 100 mil apart. Take a look at this, guys. And also, another very important item right here we've got this capping right here you can see how they've just butt jointed against the walls right here that's non-compliant there has to be an upstand and a pressure flashing on top so that's non-compliant as well here guys and it's pretty hard to see from the street but that is a defect right here also check it out they've got some little cavities here and there and there's also some cracking right here have a look guys lower roof as well now so we were over there and now i'm above the garage i really wanted to show you guys this here as well so we've got all the cappings as well here non-compliant have a look at this guys no fall whatsoever 0 0.25 it's like it's all level non-compliant have a look at this upstand here guys see this capping right here supposed to have a minimum upstand. I mean, look at look how it's flexing on its own. Look at it. It's relying on silicon only. They're gonna get water in the partition right here and into the home. So it has to be a minimum of about 75 mil and then another flashing on top of it to cover it. I'll leave a detail on the screen to show you guys how it's supposed to be installed. I'm really surprised that I'm finding this really, really, really easy kind of defects that need to be rectified ASAP. The other thing here, we have some minor issues as well. We've got these, have a look at this paint job, guys. The painter's got only one job. 
fill, sand, paint. I mean, have a look at this, guys. Obviously, no one's going to see this, but it's a brand new home, and that's a minimum, minimum requirements, guys. Come on. Have a look at this, guys. And as you can see here again, see here they do have an upstand, but that's not complete because it's supposed to have another one on top. This fl this apron flashing right here goes up, and there's supposed to be another one on top. I'll leave a picture on the screen. And have a look at this joint right here as well. Look how there's an opening. Haven't sealed it at all. The wind-driven rain will enter this cavity. 100% Really easy to fix as well So I want to go to the upper roof here, but it looks like I might be able to get my other ladder and try to go up. Let's go Just to go on the upper roof guys. What a view Take a look at the view guys Oh, Metricon. What a beautiful view, guys. Have a look at this. I was really surprised to find this item right here, guys. Building debris. Look at this. Really dangerous. If this flies down, it can actually hurt somebody. Oh, there's another one right there as well. Another one right here. Now, this is a safety hazard. If this flies down there, guys, have a look. I mean, wow, this is heavy. Just check it. Check out the sound. Really, really heavy. So there's another, there's another lower roof right here. They have the spreaders discharging correctly in the direction of flow, really good. This is the area where I want to go there. I really want to go to this box cutter because this box cutter is non-compliant. Um, you can see how it's a wide gutter. And then um, you can see there it's been reduced, which is a big no-no guys. You can't reduce the box gutter width without an increase in depth. Now that can't, that's not been done there, so that's not compliant. And have a look at here as well. Lucky I came here because I actually missed this detail of my drone. We've got another upstand here. Have a look at this upstand, guys. Non-compliant. This upstand is non-compliant. All these are very minor issues, but you can see the water can make its way inside. Have a look at this guys, and also the, the actual clearance of the cladding to the lower roof is non-compliant. Pretty messy up here, and it looks like it's just got, it's like a bag finish. This is just base coat and paint, it doesn't look like it's texture at all guys. Let me know in the comments guys, do you think this is texture? Have a look guys, it looks like it's base coat and it's painted. So basically if the homeowner paid for a full render system, they had they basically didn't get it it's just two coats i reckon and check out the rust marks here as well already occurring see that's what happens guys when when you get your home inspected 90 percent 90 percent of inspectors do not go on the roof now it is a bit risky however i'm very very careful when i go on roof areas so as you can see guys, a lot of defects here, safety issues as well. So we're gonna document all that. I mean, have a look in New South Wales. They, they, they hardly put any fixings on the cappings. I mean, look at this, look at this capping. Look at this capping guys. One, two, have a look at this capping here. They've got fixings every, let's take a measure. They got fixings every 18, 1.9 meters. It can't be more than 500 mil. If they're following HP 39, 
However, in New South Wales, that is not enforced. I don't know why. We, we actually asked the New South Wales Fair Trading. We've asked them, do you guys reference or is it a prerequisite to use HB39? And then they came back to us with this email. It's like an AI generated response. <laughs> I mean, answer the question. Is it yes or no? Come on, man. Dude, before I go down, I'm actually gonna bring this uh, right here so it doesn't fall on anybody. Also, I'll move this as well right here so it doesn't hurt anybody as well. If the wind picks this up, it is a safety hazard. Someone can get really hurt. This is really heavy stuff. Now, this is actually a cement sheet trim. This is pretty heavy, like I said. No wonder it was heavy. Ah, oh, damn. Let's bring it down. All right, man. Thanks a lot, mate. Have a good one, brother. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Have a good Catch one. you later. Thank you. Good luck, boys. Thank you. All right, so now we're finished with the roof. Let's go and check out the inside of the home. I'm hoping that it's pretty good. Also, I hope I find a little bit of defects. Let's go. Guys, before we go in, the site supervisor said to the homeowners that he's looking forward to my report and that he doubts that I'll find that many defects. So let's go on in and see what we're dealing with, guys. So guys, as you can see, really nice setup here. We've got bulkheads, tile floors throughout, upstairs. We've got timber flooring. Let's go up and see what we're dealing with. But check this out, guys. It's the first time that I see actual steps into the wet areas. Have a look at this, guys. There's around, there's around 30 mil step. One measured with my ruler right here. And I'm gonna show you guys when we go upstairs what they've done. There's actually a cavity sliding door and we can see what they've done. I slide my mirror right in and we can see what's going on there. But have a look at this area, guys. Open area here, really nice area. Take a look, guys. We've got a kitchen area and you probably, you probably can see it already. Have a look at this bulkhead right there. It is out and we're gonna use a uh, leveling device, the digital leveler, to measure the deviation in the ceiling shortly. I wanna show you guys, I haven't, I haven't actually showed you yet how I use this device on the ceilings, it's pretty handy. So, let's get right into it, guys. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna connect these beats together and put the floor leveling device on it. And we're gonna measure the ceiling deviation along this area, guys, so let's start. Let's put this on first. You did the right yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right, let's chuck this here and lock this. All right. So now what I'll do. We'll turn this on. Turn this on. Hook it on like this. There we go. So for example, let's measure this bulkhead right here. So we'll just zero the device. And then if I, for example, measure 1.8 meters, because the standards does state within 1.8 meters, 1.8 is around here, right there. So let's check out what's happening. So we've got zero mil here, guys. Now all I have to do, this is how simple it is to use this device. And I love using it. It makes life easier, guys. So then I move it to this area right here. And I put the device like this. Wait for it to settle down. We've got around minus eight mil, which is in breach of the standard, guys. Over 1.8 meters can't be more than five mil. 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1
metres cannot be more than five mil, guys. And if I drag this along the whole way here, let's see this bulkhead. <laughs> let's see what's going on here, guys. Let's let it settle down a bit. Minus 14, thir minus 13 mil. So we've got minus 13 mil, guys, for this section right here. Now, have a look at this bulkhead as well, guys. So I've changed the lens for you guys to see exactly how this ceiling is. There is no distortions at the moment. Have a look at this, guys. You can clearly see a deviation, but how much is it? How much is the deviation? Let's have a look. If I put this right here, and let's reset it to zero. There you go, we've got zero now for this section. And let's move around here, which is around the 1.8 mark. And wait a, wait a bit to settle. We've got minus nine mil, minus eight mil. Minus seven mil, guys, out of tolerance. And then if I move it along here, let's have a look what happens here. Let's have a look what happened here. Minus six, minus eight mil, this section. Here. Minus 14 mil, wow. Now, I also saw that this bulkhead over there, right there, is also out. Can you see how it starts a bit wider here and then it, it tapers down? Let's see what's going on here, guys. So you can see, guys, from this point to around this point is minus nine mil. So you can see that there's a 10 mil deviation here. Take a look at that. You can tell from the bulkhead, it starts a bit wider here and then it goes thinner right there, around 10 mil, as you can see. That's what's good about this device right here. Let's see what happens when I put it here. We've got 150, 149, 150 mil. Now let's go here. Just measure it right there. So it was 149 over there. And in here, it is settling at 138. There you go, guys. So it looks like the bulkhead is out. Let's go upstairs. I've got engineered flooring here and the floor is out guys have a look at this floor here so we're going to use our digital floor leveling device so it's on at the moment so let's zero the device this is the reference point basically and we're going to carry this on to this side of the room and measure that as you can see, it's plus seven mil. So from there to here, it is plus seven mil. It goes up seven mil. Now let's go and measure this side. It is minus eight mil, guys. Now, if you guys take a look here, I mean, as you're walking, you can actually tell that something's not right here. And take a look at the skirting, how it stays level and then the floor goes down, it dips down. Have a look, guys. Have a look at the floor. That's a dead giveaway, guys. Dead giveaway. Let's move this leveling device now to another location. Let's check out what happens here. It's minus six mil. Put it right here, minus 11 mil. Oh my God. So this area 
is defective. It is in breach of the God to standards and tolerances, guys. So the God to standards and tolerances does state, guys, that new floors are defective if within the first 24 months of handover they differ in level by more than 10 mil in any room. So this room is already out of tolerance, guys. So let's take a look at this ensuite here, guys. We've got the step here. We'll have a look what's going on shortly. But take a look at this, guys. The drain is just full of building debris and it is in breach of AS 3500.2 guys. Look at this, full of sand, cement and also the same thing goes for this drain as well. Now why is this not a good idea? Because when the homeowners move in, it might get clogged up and the whole room will get flooded. So just make sure before handover guys, check your drains, make sure the building debris is taken out. Now let's take a look at this section right here. Have a look at this section guys. Mm. Put a bit of light there. I'll slip my little mirror inside. Hopefully you guys can see what's going on. If not, I'll put a picture anyway. You guys can see the screed right there, there is no vertical termination of the membrane anywhere. They've simply screeded that section. There's a screed there and I can't see any membrane. So when the water does go on the surface here and makes its way under the tiles, now if they've used epoxy grout here, the epoxy grout here is a good idea. However, it does crack easily between the tiles and the grout. And let's see if there's anything like that here. I mean, look, there's two different color grout here for some reason. I can't see any cracking at the moment, but just watch out for that with epoxy grout. I mean, take a look at the cutouts. <laughs> This contractor doesn't even know what a hole saw is. I mean, check this out, guys. We've got a brick overhang here of at least 30 mil. And they've just left it like that, guys. Haven't rectified it at all. Another brick overhang here. We've got here as well, what is it? Around 25 mil as well, guys. This ruler, we do sell it on our website. Go check it out. It's got a clearance gauge. It's got a ruler. Also, uh, a whole diameter measurement. For example, if I want to measure this right here, I put it in like this, and you can see three mil gap. Take a picture, send it to your builder, and say, what the hell is going on, man? And I think that's it, guys. So if you really enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. It will help my channel grow, guys. Until next time, let's go.